The dungeons, seven floors of unspeakable terror. Those brave enough to complete it, get the rare chance to do the exact same thing again, but even harder. There are many different bosses, the clown, the one that drops good loot, the imposter, this piece of defeat them to get a chance to buy loot that most of the time costs more than you can sell it for. Begging the question, why am I doing this? This will be a complete guide on everything you need to know about how to do dungeons. Now the very first run you have in dungeons will probably look something like this. And this is because of something called the Dungeoneering skill. This is a skill which you can level up by participating in dungeon runs and it gives you a massive stat boost while inside dungeons. The Dungeoneering skill is broken into two main sub skills, the Catacomb skill and the Class skills. Catacomb's XP is given at the end of every run and this skill gives up to a 465% stat boost to most of your stats at max level. The class skill on the other hand gives you XP depending on the classes you and your teammates picked during the dungeon run. All you need to know for now is that if you pick the archer class for example, you will get XP to level up the archer class, straightforward enough. The higher floors can be unlocked by reaching higher catacombs levels, but with each higher floor, the mobs get 50% harder. The amount of catacombs and class XP you receive also increases for higher floors. Now that you understand that you have to keep dying in dungeons at the start in order to level up this dungeoneering skill, you can start doing dungeons now, right? Wrong. First, the game forces you to socialize by creating a party of up to five people to do dungeons with. At the start, when you're doing the first few floors, just try to get into any party you can find, since most parties have certain class level requirements, preventing you from joining them. At the start, therefore, try to stick to one class so that you can level it up and reach the requirements to join these slightly more competent parties. But which class do you pick? Well, each class has varying playstyle and abilities with different weapons and gear required to match. You select a class once you enter a dungeon room with your party and you will be given a dungeon mob if you don't already have one which allows you to use your class abilities. I will briefly summarize the different playstyles for each class. Tank. This class focuses on going in the front lines and blocking damage with your teammates while not dealing a lot of damage yourself. The abilities are an AoE wave attack that deals damage based on your defense, and a taunt with a 10 block radius that also increases your damage reduction. Healer Increases all healing and provides many ways to heal and revive your teammates. The abilities are an AoE healing circle, healing all players inside, and an ability which heals all players to full health and grants them a shield blocking damage. Berserker This class focuses on single target melee damage and lifesteal. The abilities allow you to throw an axe dealing damage and also summon zombies to aid you in battle. Archer, a very high damage range class with low survivability which can clear rooms extremely fast if you have the right setup. The abilities are shooting a set of explosive arrows and rapid firing arrows for the next 4 seconds. Mage, this class makes all weapons ranged and specializes in large area damage using gear abilities. The class abilities are shooting an exploding sheep as well as striking nearby mobs with lightning for 15 seconds. I would recommend picking one of the three damage based classes to begin with as this allows you to solo clear dungeon rooms without relying on your teammates, but this can be difficult to begin with if you don't have good gear or a high catacombs level. Also, if multiple people pick the same class, then the bonus stats that class receives is also reduced, so of course if someone picks the same class as you, make sure to assert your dominance in chat and persuade them to pick another class. If you've decided which playstyle suits you, you probably need to know what gear you need to buy for your class. On screen is a quick summary of the different armor you should at least have at each floor. Note that this is simply just a brief overview of decent gear and there are many factors and variables which can determine how good a set of gear is, but this is a good step to get you started. Also, some gear is locked behind certain catacomb or floor level requirements, so it can be beneficial to skip certain gear and rush the requirements to unlock better gear if you can afford it. For weapons and pets, again here is another summary of decent setups to get, but again make sure to take your account into account when deciding which gear to get. For example, the Flower of Truth doesn't have any requirements to use, so you can skip buying an aspect of the dragons if you're able to afford the Flower of Truth straight away. There are also some other optional equipment that will help you clear dungeons faster. 
The first of these is an aspect of the end or an aspect of the void. This weapon is essential as it will vastly improve your mobility in dungeons and allow you to reach areas previously inaccessible. Other useful gear is healing gear such as Wand of Atonement, Florid Zombie Sword and Gloomlock Grimoire. An Overflux or Plasma Flux Orb also provides regeneration and damage. A Wither Cloak Sword further helps with survivability as it blocks damage in exchange for mana. The final useful weapon is the Ice Spray Wand which freezes mobs for 5 seconds while allowing you to deal bonus damage. A bonus good situational item for the tank class is the Jingle Bowl item as this taunts all nearby mobs. With your gear class and team set, you are now ready to begin doing dungeon runs. First let's talk about the structure of a dungeon. The first part of a dungeon is a set of rooms spawned in a randomly generated order. You can see the discovered dungeon layout and your location in it by using the map, which is always in the last slot of your inventory during a dungeon run. In order to complete the first section of a dungeon run, you need to clear all the rooms from the green starting room to the red end room, also known as the blood room. There are many different types of rooms along the way, each needing to be cleared in a different way. Brown rooms are the standard mob room, you need to kill all the starred mobs in here to clear the room. This is usually multiple low level mobs or a single mini boss. Purple rooms are puzzle rooms, you need to complete the puzzle to clear the room, but if you do it wrong, these rooms can be failed. Pink rooms are fairy rooms, this room is automatically cleared and you can kill a fairy in this room to respawn if you died. Yellow rooms are mini boss rooms, simply kill the mini boss to clear the room. There is also the orange room, which I wish didn't exist and it's called the trap room. You need to complete parkour to unlock a set of 3 or 4 chests in order to clear this room. Finally, there is the aforementioned red blood room. These also spawn mobs you need to kill to clear it. The path to the red blood room is always shown by closed red or black doors you can unlock by picking up a key dropped from clearing the last mob in the previous room. After you've cleared the blood room, you can move on to the second stage of the dungeon run, the boss fight. Each floor has a different boss. Most of these are straightforward enough, defeat the smaller mobs in phase 1 before killing the main boss. Probably the most confusing and definitely the most annoying boss to fight is Thorn. During the entire boss fight, Thorn simply flies above you doing absolutely nothing, but doesn't take any damage apart from with a special weapon called the Spirit Bow. Now the only way you can get this bow is by a mob that spawns called a Spirit Bear, which then drops the bow with a single arrow you can shoot to damage the boss. Not only do you need to do this 4 times to win, but if you miss, then you have to wait another 10 hours for the next Spirit Bear to spawn. Meanwhile, there's also about 100 mobs flooding the arena trying to kill you, so, you know, that's also fun. Another thing you need to know about bosses is that you get rewards for killing the same boss a certain number of times. These rewards are very worthwhile and good to aim for. Killing most bosses a thousand times gives a diamond head, which is worth around 100 million coins depending on the boss. If you're aiming to get this particular milestone, I'd recommend doing the floor 2 boss, as it is very easy to complete quickly for most players, and the dungeon loot drops from this floor are also very profitable. The only downside is, you don't get a lot of dungeoneering XP, as this is quite a low floor. After completing the dungeon run, you get a grade ranging from D to S+, for how well you completed the run. This score is based on many factors, including number of deaths, failed puzzles, rooms completed, secrets found, I'll get more into secrets in a little bit, and how fast you completed the run. Getting a higher score offers you better dungeon chests, often with higher rarity loot up to 6 different chests. It is important to remember that in order to open a chest and get dungeoneering XP for a run, you need to have reached the second class milestone. Milestones are unlocked by the damage dealt, taken or healed during the run, depending on which class you picked. Reaching this milestone is not hard at all and was probably implemented just to prevent AFK party members from collecting loot and XP. Assuming you've got this, you can then look through all the chests, but you can only open one of them. Although the higher rarity chests often have better loot, they also cost more to open, so make sure to take this into account when picking a chest. Buying a dungeon chest key allows you to open a second chest during a dungeon run, and buying a kismet feather allows you to reroll the loot inside a dungeon chest. As well as loot, you also receive wither and undead essence from the chests. Essence can be used at Malik in the dungeon hub. The main use for it is to dungeonize and star your gear. This increases your weapon stats, with an additional increase while inside dungeons. You can see the bonus increase in grey text next to your regular stats. Gear can be dungeonized once and starred up to 10 times. The first 5 stars cost an increasing amount of essence, with the next 5 costing master stars, which is a drop from master floors that you unlock after completing the first 7 floors. 
Each piece of gear requires a different type of essence to star it, with there being 7 types in total. Each essence is also obtained in a different way from dungeons. Spider essence by killing spiders, ice essence by killing frozen adventurers, gold essence by killing King Midas, and so on. Gear can also be salvaged, which destroys it and grants a small amount of essence corresponding to the gear. It is recommended to only salvage gear you get as drops from low level mobs in dungeons, as the better gear is worth a lot more than the essence you can get from salvaging it. Other uses for essence are upgrades that give permanent buffs both inside and outside dungeons. Now let's talk about dungeon secrets. These can be a bat you need to kill, an item drop, a chest you need to open, or wither essence you need to click on. They give a total of 40 points worth of score when collected, and spawn in predetermined locations in rooms. Memorizing these locations is vital to be able to clear a dungeon efficiently and get a high score at the same time. Once all the secrets have been found in a cleared room, the tick on the map will turn green for that room. The best way to learn about secrets when starting off is to use a mod. So let's talk more about the different mods for dungeons. The first mod that you'll need is a map mod. This will display the map in the corner of the screen at all times so that you don't have to open up the map in your inventory to try to find out where you are. Dungeon Utilities is one option but for me it doesn't work properly so I'd suggest instead using Skytills. The next mod that you need is a puzzle solver. This tells you exactly what you need to do for every puzzle to complete it in the shortest time. Again I would suggest using Skytills. A third feature of the Skytools mod is that it tells you your current score for the dungeons. Another mod is for learning the secrets I just mentioned. I would either use the Dungeon Rooms or Dungeon Guides mod for this one. One shows the waypoints for the locations of all the secrets, whereas the other one draws a path to the nearest secret. Finally, I would recommend using a Loot Calculator mod. This calculates the difference between the dungeon chest selling prices on the auction house and the cost of the chests. The one that I use is a feature in the Not Enough Updates mod. Now, you pretty much learn about every feature of dungeons, but it's still important to complete floors optimally. Here are a few tips on how to clear the dungeons in the shortest amount of time. The first tip is to rush the blood room at the start of the run and open it early. This is because the mobs in this room spawn at a very slow rate, and opening this room and then leaving it to go clear other rooms gives time for the mobs to spawn. Blood rushing, as it is called, is also used in higher floors, such as floor 6, as the mobs in this room drop very good loot. Try to find a party to do dungeons with, this can significantly reduce the time to complete a run if everyone knows what they're doing. You can assign roles for different players, for example, one person clears the mobs in every room, another completes the puzzles, while a third collects secrets. Speaking of clearing mobs, for a particular room layout, the mobs always spawn in the same spots, so memorizing these spots is a good idea to be able to quickly clear the rooms with area of effect damage. If you are not with a team, then the best idea to clear a dungeon quickly is to go down a path that none of your party has gone down. This makes sure that every person is contributing to clearing the rooms. Movement is also a key part of clearing runs fast. Not only is the aspect of the end essential in runs, but other movement weapons such as spamming the rogue sword's ability while waiting for doors to open is a good idea in order to clear rooms that much faster. For harder floors, make sure your healing gear such as Wand of Atonement or Florid Zombie Sword are on easily accessible keys so that you can quickly react and heal up if you're on low health. Instead of using the dungeon orb, you can also quickly use your dungeon class abilities by pressing the drop and drop stack keys. These are Q and Control plus Q by default. And that's pretty much it. Make sure to check the pinned comment on this video as I will update it with any new or missed information that I left out. As always, if you find this guide useful, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I would also like to give a thanks to everyone that has subscribed so far. Honestly, I didn't expect it to get this big this quick. That's what she